Do you think EDD is a reason why you come to camps? I think that EDD is a major draw of our school. That many students want that immersive program where they can really stretch. Like I said, EDD is the top of the top. If you really want to do engineering, then this is the place to go. If you can uh, help someone define their future, you're touching much more in that regard because that student will it would be like a ripple effect they'll pay it forward in a sense and they'll help others who will help others and hopefully we can have this whole network of students who are finally understanding what it is that we're capable of This is the California Academy of Mathematics and Science. Ranked the second best high school in California according to US News, it is home to the Engineering Design and Development Program. But what exactly is this program, and why is it offered at CAMS? EDD, or um, Engineering Design and Development, I would describe more of a competition than it is a class where uh, 36 of the best students come together to complete a mission objective uh, given by our engineering teacher, Joseph Carpenter, where it's supposed to kind of mimic what it would be like to get sort of a government contract or you know any other sort of like that, sort of contract like that. And basically, we're supposed to come together and complete this mission objective, whatever it may be, to build something to uh, have it do a certain action, whether it be, you know, making it across a field or uh, jumping like a 10-foot wall or something like that. But again, I would describe it more of a learning experience and a journey where we come together rather than it just being your regular run-of-the-mill, you know, engineering class. Meet Mr. Carpenter. Um, my name is Joseph Carpenter, and I am the, uh, one of the engineering instructors here, uh, the capstone engineering instructor, which is the EDD class. Mr. Carpenter has helped EDD period three by organizing roles and offering guidance to help within the process of creating the robot. One of the first things Mr. Carpenter assigned even before announcing this year's mission was a flash challenge, a small competition between the EDD periods to see who could build the farthest throwing egg launcher. The winner of this challenge was able to get first pick for company color as well as $200 straight to their bank account. Though we didn't win the flash challenge, our class learned valuable lessons about team communication and leadership which helped us unite and grow as a company. Yes, this challenge was very unorganized and stressful at times, but at the end of the day, everyone had fun seeing the fruits of the team's labor in action as we shot six large jumbo eggs across the field. I think we weren't working well together as a group at first, but you know, the time gets to you and everybody came together at the end. I think we tried our best. Maybe it wasn't our best shots, but... It was a learning experience. It was a learning experience. We had that. Our launcher is perfect. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> okay, Joseph. After the challenge, our team worked to develop our team identity, including our company logo, name, and vision. After almost two weeks of discussion, we decided on the name Avenir, which is French for the future, symbolizing our team's mission to further the technological future for individuals with differing backgrounds and develop a strong sense of community. Now that we had an established identity, all that was left was for the mission to be announced. So, we have our mission, which is called the Box and the Hound. Okay. The Carpet Initiative has been commissioned by the U.S. military to design, build, and demonstrate a suite of semi-autonomous stealth-like robotic devices hereafter known as a fox and a hound, capable of negotiating uneven terrain, running and jumping, in order to complete not quickle forward within time parameters. The mission this year will take place on the grass field next to the CAMS basketball courts, and will be split into two trials, one where the bot will perform its duties as a fox, and another as a hound. As the fox, the robot will be placed on the end of the mission field in order to retrieve an egg from a secure structure in the middle of the field. Meanwhile, the hound will be placed on the opposite end of the field while scanning the perimeter of the henhouse. The fox will have to safely make its way across the mission field 
avoiding any obstacles to the structure. The fox will then have to carefully find its way into the henhouse and retrieve the egg from its position without awaiting any attention to the opposing robot guarding the structure. If the egg is taken and secured, the hound must stay 22 feet away from the henhouse and wait until the fox leaves the location. After the egg's retrieval, the fox will then quickly run from the henhouse and return to its original position, all while being chased down and evading capture from the hound robot. When the fox passes the boundary line, the hound will then chase the fox down and terminate its function by hitting a magnetic relay switch with the magnet. If the fox is stopped, then the hound must retrieve the egg and place it back in its original position within the henhouse. If the fox returns to its original position with the egg, then it completes its mission. What do you hope to gain from this experience? Um, besides the obvious of like a winning robot and beating the other team, probably just like a good thing to kind of look back on when I go to college and think, oh yeah, EDD, that would have helped me like right now in this university class or like in this job experience. I hope to uh, actually learn and see how electrical um, generally like operates within a larger uh, scope. So like um, what exactly we do, because like I've heard of like electrical engineers and all that, but um, like I want to actually do what they do so that I can see whether this is like a good fit as a career. I hope to hone my communication skills with the class this large and also with my position I get to communicate with various people and work on my skills at communicating. Um, I hope to gain more confidence. Um, I've, I think I've really been able to see what I'm capable of doing and just like seeing everyone else and what they're capable of doing really think, like, makes me think like me, even as right now, like a teenager, a senior, um, there are a lot of things that we can do. I want to work in business. So for me, working in the finance team made sense. So I hope to un like gain an understanding of how how business works, how we're trying to raise money, how like advertising and finance works, just to kind of get a little preview before I go to college and learn that stuff. With the mission announced, Avenue Innovations went right to work planning and breaking down the design requirements of this year's robot. As we worked, we started coming up with possible designs and ideas to later present in the systems performance specifications presentation. Now we know one meters per second is the requirement for the both of them. The Systems Performance Specifications, or SPS, was our first major event involving the presentation of our ideas to a group of industry professionals in order to gain input and criticism for our robot design ideas. Alright, so Logan, how do you feel about the presentation? I feel like it's pretty good. Everybody's been practicing their parts, you know, getting a uh, make sure they're having it down. Solid, well. solid. Um, I'm pretty excited. I never thought I would really be here, to be honest. So. And I'm the head of outreach. Um, my team is dedicated to introducing STEM and STEM careers to middle school and elementary school students. We have like 20 minutes left. You guys did great for the past three practices. We're really proud of you. And I know it's been a very stressful couple of months. And things started out rough because of the egg challenge. <laughs> and we were at each other's throats, but look at us now, right? We're great now. So we just wanted to give you guys a little pep talk to just motivate everyone and to just like, go in there with confidence. Bottom line, we're better than the other team. <laughs> Amen. Hi, welcome to our SPS presentation. This is that the ABS would break uh, in the process, the process that we used. Um, I think it went pretty well. We all answered questions really well. Um, we had some good feedbacks, but I feel like we're pretty on set. It was a lot smoother than how I would have like pictured it was going to go like two weeks ago. How are you feeling about EDD now? I feel like you've unified as a team now. Now that we gained a better understanding on what we needed for our robot design, Avenir began to start the prototyping phase, where parts began to be manufactured to prove their walking system would work in the proof of concept presentation.
this design doesn't have the palette on it. Dishan, can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing right now? Currently, uh, we need an XT90 connector to charge the LiPo battery, LiPo battery. And so we don't have that, we have an XT60. So what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna convert this XT60 to an XT90 to connect to the battery so we can charge it. We're talking about the robot structure we're programming in electrical right now. Um, that way we don't put random stuff in the way for sensors and kind of Proof of Concept, or POC, was a presentation similar to SPS where Avenir presented their progress on the robot by showing their ideas physically working. Just like SPS, we came out of POC with lots of useful feedback by industry professionals. Using their feedback, we worked quickly to fix our designs and eventually all that was left was to create the entire robot. After six months of hard work and adjustments, Avenir would like to now present our robot for the mission Fox and the Hound.